Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Straightforward Farming Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Reed, alongside Nick McCormick. And we are not cranking out podcasts on a regular basis like we promised on the last one. But we're, you know, I mean, we're, we're, we're easing into yeah. it. Yeah, we've only we're, missed a week, I think, yeah. roughly. So, got to give us a little bit of credit here. In our we're defense, trying. we did come over to do it one night. We got sidetracked with another project, yep. and we didn't make it in here. But. Yep. We tried. Seems like a lot of times our wives end up throwing a wrench in this. We show up to podcast and they come out in the shed. And the yeah. next thing you know, yeah, we get zero podcasting done. Well, we talk about a lot of stuff. We just don't we record do. it. We yeah. just don't record it. Yeah. yeah. I guess we're going to start wearing microphones and yeah, body just record everything. Yep. So we're getting into the doldrums of winter here. Christmas right around the corner. Yes. Finally getting some precip around here. Had a little over an inch of rain last week, but it's just nasty out. Yeah. It's coming nice and slow, though. Soaking in, so that's good. I'm yeah. Glad to have it. Yep, it is. Yep, bloodbath in the grain markets. Things ain't yeah. improving there, so. No, nope. it's, uh, yeah, cost me money every day. Loving it. Yep, same here. Yeah. So, I don't know. Not a good situation, but we will live to fight another day. I yeah. hope. Hopefully, yeah. Got a long way between now and spring, so. You no, know, those days we could just sold it right off the truck and been better off, but hey, whatever. Yep, that's what I did with all my corn. Sold every yeah. stitch of corn off the truck, stored every single one of the beans, and... So far, that's worked out okay. I mean, I guess beans have went down some, but yeah. corn ain't really. I mean, I'd, I ain't made the storage back on corn if you just stored it. So no, far, not here. Anyway. No, for sure. No, no. It, uh, yeah, it's a mess. Yep. So what's on your mind tonight? Anything no, good? Nothing too exciting going on. Just trying to get some stuff done in the shop and and uh, get everything squared away for next year for farming and just yeah. get through winter. December is always kind of a mess. You know, you it can't. Is companies are closed or christmas parties or so on and so forth everybody you know your favorite salesman or whatever at at whatever vendors on vacation this that and the other so and i get it i totally understand like december's kind of a wash like it is it's just kind of you can't count on anything there needs to be like a federal rule that you gotta have all your christmas parties done between now and Christmas, you know, because you call in January, the first week of January. Well, we're having a Christmas party this week. It's yeah. like, God damn it, Christmas has been over for weeks. <laughs> well, I get why they do it because you can only get it in so many places. Exactly. But yeah. yeah, it is a mess. Yep, yeah, it kind of gets screwed up. So yeah. it is what it is. I always say, from a business standpoint, January second is my favorite day. Yeah, because then you're finally like you don't get you can't get anything out of anybody from Thanksgiving to New Year's. Like Agreed. Just if something happens to show up or make it or gets done, that's just a bonus because otherwise. Yep. Agreed. So what do you think on this machinery market? Is it cooling off? I mean, I, I can't help but think high interest ain't going to be putting the brakes on stuff. I would think stuff. it would have to on I some mean, stuff. It, it I, looks like to me that it is cooling off on certain things. low hour pre-emission stuff is still pretty strong. Sure. And probably um, will continue to be even yeah. once the dust settles, wherever it settles. Yeah. Um, but I think one of these days the combine market has to take a bloodbath. Oh, it's got to. It's you know? got to. seems like every dealer, I, every deer dealer you look at has got... 15 780s yeah low hours sitting there you know yeah. it's like there's starting to be a lot of machinery piling up in our immediate area yeah on lots i mean our local john deere dealers got more that's, machinery that's than the I most mean. they've had since as long as i can remember yeah to be honest yeah yeah i'll agree so yeah i don't know and i mean it ain't like commodities have rebounded and went the mm. other way you know i mean things have just been kind of where they're at even getting a little bit worse so i mean yeah. i don't know and you know i don't know of any farmer here locally that's just in the position where it's like, man, I got to trade this thing. You know, the guys have upgraded yeah. so much in the last yeah. 10 years that it's so like, over-equipped for the yeah. most part, you know. I don't know. But then again, nobody wants to work on stuff. Parts are hard to get, so on and so forth. So it leads you to push for something newer. But yeah. they still break down, too. Sure. So we're still going to have stuff for them. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's I guess it's all going to shake out here. Pretty quick, we're going to know. I mean, it's yeah. it's kind of scary to think about, you know, that really less than 60 days we're going to start setting insurance prices and yeah. corn ain't doing much at all. It ain't looking too good for that. Yeah. Nope. But, you know, they keep bouncing this South America weather back and forth, but it's like it ain't it ain't changing the market. And, you know, yeah. It's almost like what happened here this year. You know, it, we were in a, a pretty good drought. I mean, yeah. really, in, in most of Illinois, didn't really seem to affect the market, and it wasn't just Illinois; it was Indiana, Iowa, you know, yeah. a lot of places. Didn't really affect it much, and I'm not I'm not saying USDA was right or wrong. I'm not I'm not yeah. getting at that, but the the fact of being a drought didn't really change nothing, and I just can't help but think it ain't going to be the same thing now. Yeah, I, I don't know how much of the market's actually based on facts and reality. Anyway, you know, yeah, it makes you wonder. I they mean, can kind of manipulate it however they want it, and yeah, I suppose there's bigger power players there than than the farmer. So yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's 
kind of scary. I mean, because, you know, you're kind of getting now to where interest is going to eat, which I don't know that there's a lot of farmers borrowing tons and tons of money. I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, I could go either way on that. But, you know, a lot of guys are fairly flush. I mean, they're not borrowing millions of dollars, I don't think, even if they're buying land. I yeah. Mean, I don't know. You don't have to have a whole lot borrowed when it gets to over 10% before it starts to add up. Yeah, to yeah, exactly. Down. Yeah. Yep. You know, and we've often talked in the past nowadays, and we're just going to use simple numbers here. 80 acres, 10,000 bucks an acre, you know, 800,000 bucks. Yep. And how does some of these guys come up with the down payment alone on this? Is what, and, I, and I guess I, I maybe throw out the 55 to 65 year old guys that have been established their whole life, but, yeah. you know, we got guys that are our age and younger yeah. that have bought two or three tracks of high priced ground. It's like, how the hell are you guys even coming up with a down payment? What I mean, what am I missing? And, uh, I suppose they're leveraging another piece against it. I, you know, I guess the only thing I can think of, but which is a dangerous game to play. Yeah, but damn dangerous. But I get still. why you would do it, but still, then you end up losing two pieces if you're not careful. But I mean, do you really think we'll look back in ten years and say, "Man, I could have bought that for twenty thousand an acre because now it's forty. I don't know. Maybe we will. <laughs> I'm not saying we won't. I hope not at some level, but I'd still like to buy some. But boy. I don't know if it if it's to that corn's gonna have to be a whole lot higher than four fifty. I would sure think. You know, I mean, and right now it's not slowed anything down, but we haven't had the time for the the money to flush yeah. out of the farm economy yet either. But I don't foresee land coming back down a ton as long as we're pushing solar and wind. If I can put a windmill up on eighty acres and get thirty five forty grand a year off of that, yeah, they're eating up and they're eating up plenty of acres doing that all the time. So yeah, so that makes it that much worse. Well, be interesting to see, I guess. Hindsight's twenty twenty. We'll know eventually what we should have done. Yeah, we will. And by then, it'll be too late. Mm-hmm. Land's always too high-priced. Yeah, absolutely. You show me some of the cash flows, I'll buy it all. Yep. You know, Didn't cash flow at 3000 bucks an acre, so let's wait till it's 10000 <laughs> Buy her then. Buy her yeah. all. Yeah. No doubt. The yeah. Parlor mantra. It <laughs> is. <laughs> On a somewhat unrelated note, I saw a, a deal today where New York City in the congested areas downtown is going to start. They got cameras put up, and they're going to start automatically tolling you for driving through those areas for, during business hours. So it'll be like twenty some bucks a day if you go through there. Are you serious? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just to drive through the area that you've been driving through for ten years you're on your going, way to work. on your way to work. Yep. Going to start charging you for it in an effort to reduce congestion, mm-hmm. save the environment. Yeah. Sounds to me like a way that we just start taxing every vehicle on the road to make up for electric vehicles that ain't paying no fucking gas tax is what <laughs> yeah. it sounds to me like. Yeah, yeah, it's very possible. Yeah, all in the in the name of climate change. Yeah, yep. yeah. This lithium mine is way better. Oh, absolutely, way yeah. better yeah. than that coal mine or, yeah. or having an oil rig somewhere. It's way better. Yeah, lithium. That's the way to go. It is. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to get in a wreck and have battery acid all over me. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yep. Have you seen any videos on the Tesla Cybertruck? I have not. Yeah, they had one with a hook to a sled the other day, and it outpulls the power stroke, and it outpulls this, that, and the other. My question is, what's it weigh? I haven't looked it up. I should have looked it up. I just thought of this, but my guess is it weighs a whole lot more. Oh, for sure. I know that know. for a fact because I know of some dealerships around here that got to put new lifts in for electric vehicles because the current yeah. lifts that they have are maybe not quite big enough. Mm-hmm. It's just like, well, yeah, it pulls it, but the power stroke's spun out. Yeah. Well, if that thing weighs 4,000 more pounds, yeah. that makes a big difference. You yeah. Know? Let's go drive 5,000 miles a piece and then hook up to the sled. Let's see, uh, <laughs> yeah. see who wins that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I ain't seen nothing on that. Yeah. Yeah, they did had one with, with a drag race with it as well. They raced a Porsche 911. The Cybertruck was faster than the Porsche pulling a Porsche 911 on a trailer. Really? Yeah. Which, I mean, you can get some hellacious yeah. torque and shit out of electric. Yeah, it's but it, instant. And, yeah. Just the longevity, I don't know about that. Yeah, about I mean, the time it might start to pay for itself, it craps out and you need new batteries and it's not worth doing. And Yeah. yeah. Recycle, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It's a great plan. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, I don't know. Do you think that's all part of the grand plan now is to get vehicles so high that... They're going to force you to elect. You know, it's funny how that shit works out that, you know, new power stroke and then, you know, I'm just going to throw it at 100 grand. You know, I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. It might be more than that. But then somebody slides in with this electric truck that you yeah. can get for 50. So, because yeah. you willingly normally wouldn't buy that piece of shit. But it's like, well, I'm going to save 50 grand. Fuck it. I'll try it. Yeah. That I don't does know. make you wonder. There again, we won't know till it's too late. 
But I'm sure there's a game to be played there. Oh, yeah. Always is. Yeah. I thought it was funny that Tesla didn't get invited to the electric, electric vehicle summit, even though they sold more in one quarter than the other th- manufacturers did cumulative. Really? But, yeah, didn't they, get the invite. They, they didn't invite Elon. He wasn't super thrilled <laughs> about that. Yeah. I'll be damned. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to shake out. Yeah. Oh, Elon, not a fan of Disney. No, no, he's not. Yeah, not a fan of, of being blackmailed with money. He, he's he's all good there. You know, kind of determined he didn't need it, and you can move yep. on. Yep. Hats off to him for that. We'll give him credit there. Yeah, I suppose when you get a guy in his position, I mean, can they or can't they be bought? For I mean, it was going to take a hell of a price tag, I would think. Yeah, to, yeah. I don't think he's looking to sell. No. Yeah. Don't think he's looking to sell on that deal. Yeah, and I've never followed all that Tesla stuff much as, as far as what they're doing in the I technology. I'm not, I'm not interested in one. I don't. That's how I am. Don't I'm even not, really see I'm not looking here. for newer vehicles. I'm looking for older vehicles. I'm the same way. I want a 69 Mach 1 and a 79 Ford. Yeah, that's, that'll be my next purchase. Man, it might be 10 years from now. I don't know when it'll be. But yeah, 79 Ford yep. F-250 be my next yeah. purchase if you can find one. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I'd love to have an 80 to 86 F-350. I just always liked that body style. That's what I yeah. grew up with. Yeah. We had a bunch of them. I'd Cash like for clunkers ate up a bunch of that shit back in the day. Cause, yes, it did. I mean, you just don't even see that stuff anymore. No, it's hard to find. And if you do, and they know what they got, it's yeah. high. And I want something that, or when I say original, I mean, I'm, I'm not looking for a, a 79 F-250 with a Cummins diesel. And, you know, I'm not looking no. to do that. I want something that's basically like it was. When I it want a 400 did. Ford. Yeah. yeah. Move on. I want glass backs. I want pipes out the side. I want to listen to a cackle. Yep. Which is a rarity. What was the last loud truck you met on the road? Like, like that sounded good. You know that. Oh, that sounded good. Well, that's totally different. Yeah. I, I met a Jeep Cherokee today that apparently lost the exhaust to manifolds. <laughs> I wouldn't say it sounded good, but it was loud. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The last good sounding one's been a while. Yeah. I was just joking with a buddy of mine yesterday. You remember, like the the '92 body style Chevrolet. Z71s yep. that everybody had. Yep. Extend, they all, all had extended cab, Absolutely. basically. Absolutely. Yep. Extended cabs. And you you hear one of those take off, and they just be sound like they're really getting with it. And you look over, and they're doing 8.4 mile an hour. Yeah. And it's like, huh, that thing must be really badass. You've been cackling for 45 yep. seconds now, and you're you're damn near it to 30 mile an hour. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'd yeah. like to have a 79 stick shift on one hand, but on the other hand... I don't know either because I'm just sort of to the point of just over shift. You know, I don't like to shift anymore. To, yeah, you know. I go either way. I take yeah, either one. I would do depending on what I found. I guess it wouldn't but, bother me either. But way. God, I've sent you some links on Facebook. You know, for one that's like been done right. I mean, yeah, God right. damn, thirty grand. Or, mm-hmm. just, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Sorry. No, I don't need one that bad. No, would like to have one though. Yeah, they're getting few and far between, but and I, I don't want one all jacked up or nothing. I mean, I'm not, I don't want one that look factory. I mean, well, might might having some decent tires and rims on it, but I don't. Thirty threes or thirty fives. Yeah, I don't need nothing jacked to the moon. I don't need forty four inch boggers on it. No, yeah. no. Nope. Yeah, I'm good there. I'm too old to get in that shit. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, my cousin, you know him. He's got a real nice one. It was my truck for a yeah. while. His dad gave it to me, and then yeah. ended up he got it back then and redone it and whatnot. And it's a damn nice looking truck now. Yes, I mean, it is. Beautiful. Dressed it to the nines and yeah, very nice. Yep. Yeah, you just don't see them anymore. <laughs> no, there ain't too many of them around anymore. No, that's for sure. Nope. So what else is new? That's what I was trying to think. Nothing super exciting. Just, just trying to make it through the day. Like I said, just trying to ease through the month. Got some Christmas shopping I need to do yet. Yeah, I got a little bit of that. Just a little. Yeah, I don't have a lot to do, but just a little and try to. Put that off to the last possible minute. Yeah, I agree. Not that I don't enjoy doing it. I just, I'm a procrastinator on that stuff, and I push it off. And then you're forced into making a decision towards the end. You yeah. Know, you're yep. out of time. Christmas just ain't Christmas like it was when we were kids. You know, back then you went to the mall. And it, you, yeah. you had the Christmas tree. You had hundreds of people, you know, Christmas yep. trees every 10 feet, Christmas yep. music playing. Now you just go into Walmart, and nobody gives a shit. It, it just ain't the same. It's not saying it's bad, but it's just, it ain't the same. No, and it... How many years in a row here have we had Christmas where you could go outside in a t-shirt yeah. or a sweatshirt, you know? Yeah. like Due to climate change, of course. Yeah, probably. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Or I should say global warming. we got to be specific. You know, global yeah. warming, not climate change. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, well, it's hard to, I don't know. 
I suppose that's part of getting older too. Like it, I suppose. when you're a kid, you're excited about it because you're a kid. And yeah, you're gonna get some stuff now anymore. Like, not that I'm a Rockefeller, but if it's something I really needed in July, I'm not holding off till Christmas hoping right. to get it. Agreed. You know? Agreed. You just call the Milwaukee guy and get it and yeah. move on. You know? I talked about this on TikTok the other day. Though I can remember looking at the Sears catalog or any yes. of them for just hours. Yeah, on end. All that cool stuff. You know, of course, back then, you know, you didn't have the internet to go look up. Yeah. You, you weren't watching other kids play with toys on YouTube like no. they do nowadays. No, exactly. You were thumbing through that thing a page at a time. Every time looking at that 5.0 plastic Ford engine, thinking, yep. man, I would like to have that. Even though yep. we touched on this one other time, a couple guys told me it really wasn't that good. Your brother will screw it up for you, I think, was yeah. the general yeah. consensus I got from everybody. <laughs> Your brother will fill it full of glue, and then then you won't have anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. It was neat to think that that was in the Sears catalog. I mean, to think back when, like, oh, you need a house? Go to Sears. Yeah. Oh, you need a washer and dryer? Go to Sears. Oh, yeah, you need a 22 this? rifle? Here? Go to Sears. Yeah, yeah. They, they got it all. It was truly the Amazon of the day. I mean, I promise you in 1960, yeah. if you'd say, hey, in 50 years, Sears will be completely bankrupt out of business, they'd have laughed you just the same mm-hmm. way if I tell you that in 10 years, Amazon's going to be broken out of business. You're going to yeah. be like, no way. Yeah, and sure as hell. Sure, yeah, sure enough, they they're gone. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I'd you, like to know what what major decisions they made that really. really I would too, that. because you know, and I don't know if, and I'm just shooting from the hip. I don't know. You know, was it the f- failure to get online quicker? You know, once stuff started going that way, you know, I don't know what the. I don't know. I'd have to do. research what what was their Achilles heel on all that. You know, they. I I seen a stat, or it was kind of a, it wasn't a meme, but it wasn't necessarily a stat, and it's been shoot. 10 years ago probably but it was really cool talking about how like today the largest taxi company in the world doesn't own a car uber yeah you know the largest retailer in the world doesn't own a single brick and mortar store amazon and it went all the way down the list and as to how things have really they're the largest but they have no hard yeah. asset investments in it you know yeah it and, is interesting how that goes and so you know that would be my guess is maybe they hung on to brick and mortar stores too long and ate up a bunch of overhead i don't know you know you see that in the ag industry a little bit some dealership networks got a ton of stores some of them got a ton of service trucks yep you know goes both ways but i think it's trending more towards service trucks and less towards brick and mortar stores and locations i think it is i mean you've got to staff those and there's overhead there and taxes to pay and all this that and the other it's kind of like mcdonald's i still swear up and down in the fast food industry within 10 years McDonald's will be 100% drive through. I don't think they'll give you the option to go inside anymore because nobody goes inside. It's you got your coffee drinkers that are drinking one cup of 50 cent coffee yeah. or whatever it is that are sitting there for hours and it's like why why do we need all this overhead and headache and probably higher insurance cuz somebody could slip and fall or if you're just in your car you're in and out and didn't never touch My the brother-in-law problem. conned me into going into one here a week or so ago. I hadn't been in a, in a McDonald's in years. Yeah. I don't eat at McDonald's. If I do, it's only for breakfast. I never go there for lunch or dinner, you know, usually ever. And I know now why I don't go in, but I, I think if you, they still let you go in in 10 years, there'll be a stove and all the instructions, and you'll just make your yeah, own. Could be. Like, they'll just charge you to use their facility, and you pick it up at the end and, and carry it out. The like, few times that I've been there that way now. They're clearly catering to the drive through It's like, yes. you can see that this car's sitting here in line when you walk in. And that some bitch has been gone for twenty minutes by the yeah. time you get your food because I think I think they're trying to shove you the, away. The counter is this wide now. Yeah, like they got rid of all the big counter. There's yep. a little iPad deal over here. You order, yep. you grab your number yourself. Yep. You go sit. I mean, excuse me, sit down. Look, they bring it to you. You know, real estate and look at construction costs nowadays. If, if I could physically cut this building in half mm-hmm. and not have to have the whole seating area, the guy to clean it, the trays, the trash cans, the seats. Yeah. Think of what that cuts off of a company their, their size. I mean, yeah. is a shitload. So. I really do think that's what it'll be. It all started going to shit when they got rid of the playgrounds, Tony. Yep, that's right. That's exactly right. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, to think they even had those now is a little bit of a mind blow. Mm-hmm. You know? It is. Don't, uh... Yeah, that'd be an instant lawsuit today. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be hard to watch all those bouncy ball deals you got to jump it into. It would. Yeah. Could you imagine that during COVID? Yeah. But shit, back then, I know Burger Kings around here had the... Yeah, playland, yeah, yeah, playground, yeah. yeah, yeah. Back when you could talk to other people, not be offended, not yeah. be upset. Yeah. Well, and in fact, the last McDonald's I was in, it's like you said though, there was the counter was literally three feet wide with only one register. I mean, yeah. there wasn't multiples. Yeah. And 
I think there was two, maybe three kiosks, which mm-hmm. I just went up to look at one. I'm like, wonder how this works. I have no fucking clue. I don't know if you got to have some special app to, I don't know how that worked even to use it. I, no, you just start pop, start pressing and just go through it. Just like running a tablet on anything else. Really? Yeah. It's, I mean, it was fairly simple. And then do you like swipe a card through it or do you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. Yeah. In fact, cause I don't remember if one of the kids was with me or who it was like, the, the part that we couldn't figure out was, like, if you wanted a number one, it was on there. But if you just wanted two Big Mac sandwiches, like, well, how the hell do you just order two sandwiches yeah. only, you know? I didn't it, get that deep into it. I'm sure it's kind of a cluster. But, yeah. We went into Steak and Shake that same weekend. He conned me into that, which I hadn't been into. I've been through the drive through but I hadn't been inside for years. Same deal. Really? Yeah, same deal. Yeah. They had three kiosks, and you type it in, you go sit down, and somebody brings it out. No kidding. Yeah. We got a local bar and grill here. The robot brings your food. Yeah, I've never been in there and seen that, and it's just a local one yeah. one owner bar. I mean, ain't no yeah. chain or nothing. It, yeah, just a mom and pop bar deal. Have you been in there and? Oh, and yeah, several times. Work yeah. okay and yeah. I mean, I don't know. That it saves a ton. Like the cook carries it out, sets it on the robot. The robot takes off. The waitress follows the robot, picks it off the robot, and hands it to you. Most of the time, really? if she's busy, you can just grab it off the robot when it gets to your table and press home, and it goes back. No shit. But generally, they follow it. But it saves them from carrying well, a bunch yeah. of stuff they can't carry. Yeah. You know, because you only carry so much. I and mean, it's got, you know, higher load capacity as far as that goes. But I'll be damned. It's kind of neat novelty, if nothing else, I guess. But, but their bar is also two levels and it can't go downstairs. So, oh, you know, well, yeah, that kind of. It only delivers to most of the tables. There's only a couple that I can't make it to. But So, yeah, you start talking two stories, then that's uh, not going to work. Mm hmm. Yeah. What I find humorous about that whole scenario is that same said bar has full-length urinals, but a robot. And the full-length urinal has been gone for a long time. And I'm a big fan of the full-length urinal. Yeah. But you don't see it. There's no recent building with full-length urinals, hardly ever. No, never. Not in our area, anyway. You know, it's like, so they've got urinals from 1918, and they've got uh, a robot from yesterday. Yeah. I'll be damned. Yeah. But I like the full-length urinal. Yeah. And that's funny, too, because we only catch a very, very small glimpse of some of this. You know, like, I'm sure Chicago, the, you know, it's probably standard. Most of the restaurants have a robot, probably, I mean, more be. than likely. I mean, might be. I'll never know, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, same here. I don't plan on finding out anytime soon. Yeah. What a shithole. Yeah. Try to avoid that like the plague. Yeah. So what's going on in the world of politics? Have you been following any of it lately? I don't follow it much. Try to stay out of it. Yeah. It just makes me mad. Oh, yeah. It just yeah. makes me mad that the dumbest among us seem to represent us uh, I, I would like to and this is probably going to be a fucking rabbit hole that we shouldn't go down but so how does this work like with the war in israel so hamas comes over and kills all these fucking people takes a bunch of hostages blows a bunch of shit up so then israel takes it to the 10th power and kicks their ass they're like wait wait wait, wait. hey you gotta stop now god damn it you guys can't be retaliating like that the same now, thing, how the fuck does the that same work? thing every time israel retaliates hey your guys are kicking too much ass yeah and then we, we forgot how good you were at it Hold on, hold on, time yeah. out, time out. We're, we're sorry, we're not going to do it again for another 20 years. And then when we do it and you bomb the shit out of us, take some more of our land, yeah. we're just going to bitch about it for another 20 years. Yeah, They were showing that Gaza City, when it was fucking, what the hell was it, 92% of the buildings have been fucking leveled? I mean, <laughs> that's okay. I'm that's, sure the U.S. taxpayer will oh, get, yeah. the, get the opportunity to rebuild yeah. it. So. Oh, I'm sure. But it's funny how the war in Ukraine just died. I yeah. mean, I ain't heard a word about that. So. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. If yeah. there even was one to begin with. Yeah, exactly. You don't know what to fucking believe anymore. No. That, that's no shit. Like, we didn't have any news anchors over there or anything. Like, I thought about that long before this deal. Like, if Russia wants to know anything about us, easily available on the news. Easy to send people in the country. Easy to spy on us. You want to know something about Russia? Good luck. Yeah. You can't hardly get anybody in there. Not being mean here, but you got to send... A, probably a blonde white guy as your spy. Yeah. Otherwise, he's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So that, that takes away half your agents right off the get-go. Yep. You know? And it's so hard to, to figure out their culture and their language and this, that, and the other because they keep it so tight-lipped that it'd be way easier to infiltrate us than them, yeah. in my opinion. Well, and that and if you're in Russia, all you got to do is get a flight to Mexico and then just walk across the fucking border and you can no go anywhere you want and they don't even know you're here yeah you'd be a citizen it, yeah get a driver's license Fuck oh up. you can run for sheriff now yeah exactly yeah, you, can fucking a, appalling. you can be a cop yeah yeah what scares me about all that border shit is 
it looks like to me they're moving over a shitload of 22 year old 20 you know mm-hmm. 20 to 35 year old military age men yep from all descents and that's the part that scares the shit yep. out of me and they're not going to be military men on our side of, yeah, of the fight exactly yeah. and, I, and i've always said this for years and maybe maybe i'm looking too far in this maybe i'm being stupid but you'll see you know national geographic channel this you know they always got these border shows and mm-hmm. blah 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 every fucking guy guarding the border is a mexican you know this is juan gomez fucking guarding it fucking, you know what i mean it's like we got the fox guarding the fucking hen house here what are we doing you know it's never fucking Bill Thomas, yeah. border agent. It's always fucking Julio Garcia. I yeah. mean, come on. That, that's a good point. That's a very valid point. Yeah. He just came across yesterday who made him a law enforcement officer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable. So I don't know. I smell a rat in the hen house there, but yeah. whatever. What do I know? I'm not running the show. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the sad part is I'm not sure who is. No. Yeah. I'm not sure they know. No, I don't think they do and don't think they care. No. All I know is it's getting pretty expensive to live in Joe Biden's America. Yeah. Damn like, expensive. Which side of the aisle you're on, I don't care. Well, I mean, I do care, but, like, it's getting pretty pricey to live in America anymore. Yeah. Like, it's... With no end, no, in, no I end mean, in sight. Like, you know, used to a cartload of gr- groceries at Aldi's was 100 bucks. Walmart was 200 Your local grocery store is probably 3 Now it's 300 at yeah. Aldi's. Yep. To get a cart load. Yep. And you don't have that. It's not a full cart. Yeah. And know? just like we said previously in this podcast, do you think machinery is going to come down? It's not. We're not sitting here saying machinery has come down. We're just saying we think it should based yeah. on interest. But it, so far it hasn't. But fucking shit's expensive. I mean. Everything's high. Everything is ridiculously high. I don't. I don't see an end in sight for some of that. I mean. No, I don't either. Building materials and all that. I, I think a lot of this shit now is man-made shortages. Yeah, in a sense, on lumber, whatever else. You Some know. of those companies learned their lessons. They got rid of all their old inventory. They said, "Hey, we're not going to stock up on this stuff anymore. We'll just produce what we can sell." You know. You know, and I, I always remember that as as a young or not a young child, but in my teens, you know, every summer it was these California wildfires. You know, yeah. and it's like. How the fuck have we not burnt that whole state down to where there's nothing left to burn? And, it, and now it's just new group. But, you know, yeah. every fucking year, California wildfires. And it's like, God damn. I mean, yeah. but they always use that as an excuse. What, you know, like this year, the whole Canadian wildfire. You know, like, yeah. you can't get no lumber now. Yeah. Yeah. There was plenty of smoke from something. Didn't smell like wildfire to me, but there yeah. was plenty of smoke. Yeah, I agree. Which might have saved our ass in that drought, truthfully. It truthfully probably did. Yeah. The lack of sun probably Helped us out on that. Yeah, and I'm like you. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was smoke. Maybe it wasn't. But it didn't have an ashy smell to it. No, it didn't smell like a tree on fire to me. But <laughs> it also traveled a couple thousand miles before it got to me. So. Sure. Hard to say. And I guess the other part that I have trouble with is I don't remember a lot of north wind this summer. I mean, Canada's north of us. Yeah. Got to have a fucking north wind to get the smoke down here. I mean, yeah. or maybe you don't. I don't know how this works. Well, you would think so. Yeah, you would think you would. Yeah, we don't get a lot of north wind here. No, very seldom. very seldom. Very seldom. It's usually pretty shitty when we do. Yep, but those were nice, bright, sunny days and just smoke blowing to beat hell. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's just a regular Mexican stink blowing up here. That's kind of what I wondered. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. There again, we probably won't get the truth till it's too late. Oh, yeah, we never do. I mean, you know, look at all the stuff they've, they're they still holding the truth out on us for, you know? Oh, absolutely, yeah. With no end in sight, you know, Kennedy Files is going to be releasing this yeah. year. And then, well, we got to push her to this year, and then yeah. this year, and then this year. Yeah, Trump, by gosh, she's going to release them. Then he saw him and he's like, oh, shit, I can't tell him this. Yeah. Like, like, this is a little worse than I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. We better we better just hold off on that. We'll let a few of these papers go, but yeah. Yeah, we probably better hold off on that. That's a rabbit hole I can dive down. Oh, I can't do 365 days. That whole deal intrigues the crap out of me, and I can give you my two cents on it, which don't amount to shit, but you can convince me of a new theory on that about every day. All I know is Lee Harvey Oswald wasn't the guy. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, he got hung out to dry. (laughs) That's the classic case of wrong place, wrong time. Yeah, Uh uh-huh. Yeah. And I've always said that, you know, so let's take – Gun control here in the U.S., you know, everybody always talks about it and, you know, oh, they're going to take their, your guns and this and that. And maybe they will, maybe they will. I don't know. But these people that always, oh, you know, they're going to get the lead first. Not saying they wouldn't or you didn't have the intention of doing that, but they can set you up six ways from Sunday when they hold all the cards. Yeah. 
And they probably told that guy he won a free book drawing. He's going to get the hundred free books. Go to the fourth floor and pick out your ten favorite books. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then bang, he's picking them out, and there he is. Yep. It could be something as stupid as that. Like yeah. You or know. it could even go as far as the fact that he, maybe he was involved and had intentions of doing it, but he didn't get to the crow's nest in time, and somebody else popped him. So it, it wouldn't surprise me at know, all if he know. got up there and was like, "Well, shit, somebody left my rifle up here." Yeah. And then about that time, he's like, "Oh." Now I see why that might, you know, mm-hmm. I'm sure he had some role in it, but getting that many shots off in that amount of time with yeah. a magic bullet, nah, there I no don't way. think so. Ain't no way. And it, then you're not leaving the shit behind, or it, I wouldn't think you would. It's intriguing to me, the little things like that, that play such a role in that, like Kennedy was wearing a back brace that day, so he really couldn't bend over and get out of the way. You know, like that car was set up weird. The seating arrangement, they, they had tried to get, they tried to get Conley to ride in a different car. They tried to put somebody else in there. There's a whole, I mean, you just keep, you get yeah. digging down that rabbit hole. Like that thing is like layers of an onion. It is. You just start peeling yep. it. It just starts making you cry. Yep. Like it's just one thing after another of circumstances. There had to be some pretty high power players yep. in that. Deal. And the Zapruder film, yo. Yeah, they weren't counting on that guy. Exactly. So that just throws a whole nother dynamic into it. And yeah. I don't know. It, I saw something a while back, like the guy that was leading the Warren Commission was, Kennedy just fired him for something right. else, and he ends up being in charge of the investigation. He didn't see nothing. He couldn't find anything. Yeah. You know, you're all clear. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> and it makes you wonder when something big like that happens, how much stuff actually was coincident. Like, you know, that guy might have had, might have had every intention of doing that job correctly, but now yeah. it looks bad because I just got fired. Yeah. But maybe he didn't either. I don't know. Yeah, you, you never know. know. So, <laughs> you don't know what to believe. I've seen one theory that the Secret Service guy that was carrying the M16, too. like, He'd never done that before. He wasn't normally on protection detail when they hit the gas in the car. He accidentally discharged around. That's how he got hit from the back. Yep. That's believable. It's plausible. Like that may, it is. Plausible. It makes sense. They never inventoried his ammunition, you know, so on and so forth. That would explain why the, why they cleaned up the car so quick. Like, there's just so many avenues you can go down on that deal. And and I, I like to go down all of them. I, I like to dig into my, that. But My gut tells me Lee Harvey Oswald was not involved. Lyndon Johnson was involved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's just me at a way bigger <laughs> level for sure. Yeah, I could be totally wrong, yeah. but that's what my gut tells me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bottom line is, if you call your kid by their middle name, full full name, bad shit's gonna happen. Exactly. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, don't do that. We don't need any three part names. Yeah. Just stop. Yeah, don't get cutesy with the initials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, that that shit always does intrigue me though. Just the way that certain stuff. Truly did play out by coincidence. Yeah. Truly did. But happened to play into the hand of what happened that day. And, of course, you know, 40, 50, 100 years later after the fact, like, it's easy to come up with a conspiracy theory. The Titanic, like, you can convince me about that. There's a lot of circumstances there. The Challenger. The Challenger. You know. There's a bunch of those. It's like, you know, when it initially happens, you get told a story, you believe that, and then you start hearing some other facts slash theories, and you're like, huh, well, that makes sense, you know, like. I, I do love a good conspiracy theory, but I'm not one of these every time something happens. Oh, well, it's a conspiracy. You know, yeah, I'm not. I'm not that guy. But. No. But I do think there is enough of that shit that goes on that we're not being told the truth about. Yeah, but. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And some of it, maybe they're right. Maybe maybe we're not ready for the truth. You know? Maybe well, they could be. I <laughs> you mean, know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That, that Kennedy deal truly is a mystery because, I mean, there is literally 400 avenues you could go down that, well, that makes sense. Well, yeah. so does that. And, and, and so we're going to take the guy that supposedly killed him and we're going to march him through a place where a, a, a known mobster gangster can get in with a firearm yeah. and walk right up to him. Yeah. That's the level of security. Exactly. Okay. Um, which I guess, you know. Epstein didn't kill himself either. So This is true. You know, we maybe our security on some of these things isn't that good. Yeah. Yeah. Funny how those problems just go away when you need them to. Yeah, it is. It is. I think Oliver Stone, you know, done a phenomenal job with that's, the that's movie. A great, that's a great movie. I can watch that movie it's, over and over. I can, too. Then I get so wrapped up into it. I pause it. And I'm Google searching yep. stuff. Like, yeah, because I like how they did show sort of both. Yeah. You know, he was the lawyer fighting for the right thing, but yet you had the, the yeah. guy that was feeding him the information that. Yeah. says it's bullshit. And so, a, lot of, a lot of power players there. I don't think the Cubans had nothing to do with it personally. I don't think they're that smart. I don't think they were organized enough I, or had, the, had no. the resources for it. The the mafia, for damn sure. The military-industrial complex. 
So the military dancer. industrial complex had yeah. a lot to do with it, yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure that his predecessor tried to warn him about that. I think he did, old Ike. Yeah, Ike was the last. I, don't, I, I guess I won't claim the last, but one of the one of the best presidents we ever had, honestly. Yeah, he but don't get much credit. He doesn't get much credit for anything because he wasn't a flashy guy. Yeah. You know, he was just a, this is what needs to be done. I'm going to get shit done type guy. Yep. He was the last pre-TV president. In a TV era, Ike never wins, and Ike gets criticized a lot. Like, Ike's thing was, if there's a really big problem, he'd go out and play a couple rounds of golf. Think about it. Hey, this is the solution to this. This is what I'm going to do. He'd get crucified now for doing Oh, absolutely. That, depending on which side of the aisle. It was on how the media was yeah. leaning that day. You know, but still, but yeah, he was pretty concerned about the tail starting to wag the dog, and yeah. I'd say that and he was, was right. Yeah, and I mean, this is coming from a guy who's in the military yeah. his whole life. Yeah, I mean, he, he saw it coming. He, he knew yeah. how it worked. Mm-hmm. I would say if I could go back in time, just shoot from the hip, I would have loved to have been alive in the forties and fifties, and I might totally regret that. I mean, just from the outside looking in, you know, you were still a free America. I mean, you could do whatever you wanted. Yeah. Nobody was up your ass. No. It was a good time from that. I mean, it was just it was just different, you know, especially the post-war. I mean, I think I saw a stat one time. I don't think Ike ever saw any combat. Is that right? That, because, probably, like he, yeah. because he missed World War One, and he was in charge by World War Two. Yeah. So he never actually saw any actual. That's probably I, true. I think, don't quote me on that, but I think that's, I mean, obviously he saw a lot of the things play out, and he was obviously right. a great Allied commander. Yeah. One of the best quotes on that I saw one time, and he asked this Russian general whatever their term for it is hey how do you guys get through these german lines he's like oh it's real easy he's like what you do is you just send a shitload of people through the middle he's like well then what do you do he's like oh they get killed to shit he's like but then you send a whole bunch more in that same path and eventually while they're reloading and shit then you got them and i like yeah we're gonna have to come up with a better plan than now <laughs> yeah. we're not, not sacrificing a bunch of people up the middle all the time yeah. and the russians guy was like well that's how we're doing it we got a bunch of people we're just sending them up the middle it's like all right well that's a great strategy right. but we got to come up with something else <clears throat> you're not sending the guys in the back with guns you're telling them to pick one up on their yeah. way like we, we got to have a little better plan than that could you imagine today let's go let's go back because I, I love learning and talking about world war ii could you imagine today world war breaks out and so the government comes out and says, everybody's got to sacrifice your iPhone. The one you got, you're getting rid of, and you're not getting a new one. You know, it's yeah. just cell phones are gone. Oh, my gosh. I mean, you'd have a bigger wise. war here yeah. than you would overseas. Absolutely. I mean, but back then, that's what you did. You Everybody pitched in, and yep. you, that's what you All did. your scrap metal, this, that, and the other. I just saw one, you know, bells were prevalent. Yep. And the, the frequency of a bell is curing all these sicknesses, apparently. And then they melted all the bells down yep. to make you sick. Right. And I'm like, well. Didn't they also melt those down because they needed the material? Exactly. Like, like maybe sort of, right. a little bit. Maybe that was, maybe it's conspiracy theory. I don't know. But whatever. But, yeah, getting people to pitch in on that and rations. And that was my father-in-law's point one time. Like, the rations weren't necessarily about shortages as much as sacrifice at home to support the war effort. Exactly. Keep you involved. And that, and that was a side of it I'd never really thought of, and that's probably a really valid point. Like, yeah. now there's wars going on all the time. That doesn't really affect my, you no. know. No. Gulf War One. like, I, of course, I wasn't super old when that yeah, happened. we were 12. I was pumped up. I remember at the end of it, my dad bought me a shirt, said Desert Storm. We came, we saw, we kicked ass. Yep. And I loved that shirt. Couldn't wear it anywhere because I was, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we were 12. Yeah, that, 12, yep. you know. But I uh, loved that shirt. But it's like, you know, I was super patriotic about that. Well, not that I haven't been about the rest of them. But then, you know, it's like the Iraq War. Okay, well, there's WMDs. we got to go get them. Okay, well, come to find out there wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, shit. Sorry. You know, it's like, eh, maybe we'll find out all the facts first and then dive into some of this. Like, I, I don't know. I'm still patriotic about it. I'm still, I'm still super pro-military. But it's just you just don't get that involved in it. Like, yeah. when Gulf War I happened, news coverage to that level was so new. Yeah, exactly. We watched the war we on TV. We watched the war on TV. Yeah. Now there's a war allegedly going on in Ukraine. You can't find actual legitimate coverage of it anywhere. Yeah. We see more on TikTok about this war yeah. than the news ever shows. And the funny part is, is there's a guy, uh, God damn it, and and I might say this wrong, but he, he's big on TikTok. I can, I can see his face. I can't remember his name on there. Got several hundred thousand followers. And he followed the heat of, you want to go on cheap vacation? Go to a fucking war zone. Because, like, flights are cheap, hotels are cheap, whatever. <laughs> so he went to Ukraine, and this was all just within the last month. Goes over there, 
You would have thought you were in downtown New York City, just people everywhere. I mean, really, not a blip on the radar, you know. And and he wasn't promoting it like, oh, there's no war going on here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he wasn't he wasn't doing that. But that would have never been the case twenty years ago. I mean, you just no. stayed as far away from that place as you could have, and everybody's hunkered down and yeah. blah blah blah, you know. But he was just kind of making the point that maybe what you see on TV. Isn't always reality. Exactly. And he's yeah, he, and he blatantly said on the video, you know, I'm not saying there's not a war going on in this country, but it's not just <laughs> the entire country of Ukraine getting annihilated on a daily basis. Yeah. Know? I just my wife and I just watched the movie Spy Game the other day with Brad Pitt and Robert Redford. Great movie. Always always enjoy watching it or whatever, but part of that's during, you know, Beirut and Lebanon, that deal. It's like that deal, same deal. Like stuff's getting blown up everywhere, but people keep kind of showing up randomly, like he goes over there as a photographer, and then there's these other people that are just there. Like, why would you go to that in the middle of a war zone? It doesn't seem like a great plan. I mean, he was there for a different purpose, sure. obviously, and it was a cover. But there's still plenty of other people there that, that shouldn't have been there. They could have left long before then. Right. Uh, yeah, that whole World War II, I mean, and we're damn lucky we won the son of a bitch, to be honest with you. I mean, There was a, a lot of coincidences, or not coincidences, a lot of things that, that fell our way. That could have easily went could the other easily way. Easily went the other way. Yeah. Yeah. That was God's hand in it, I suppose. But, yeah. you know, like one of the things on D Day, and I, I wish I could find this again. I was watching a documentary or something on one time. Like, we dropped some paratroopers behind enemy lines. There was a bridge we needed, and we needed to make damn sure that they didn't blow it up. And, like, we only ended up with a handful of guys there because they, we missed the target by a long ways. And, like, these five guys. There was one German tank there, and he thought we had more people than that, so he he left because he didn't want to get destroyed. We ended up keeping this bridge and then using it later, and so on and so forth. Like if that one tank would just kept rolling, yeah, he'd have killed them all. He'd have yeah. killed. There's five guys yeah. and you know a couple of rifles, and you know they got it. And then if they needed to blow it up, they could have. We wouldn't have had it. We wouldn't have had control of it. So on and so forth. And that was just like day two. Yeah, you know, that's one regret that I do have is not asking my grandpa and grandma both as to what the sentiment was back home. Like, did you have, did you have shitty media back then that, cause you know, like around here, you know, I see it on TikTok. I mean, all these people, you know, fuck Israel, you know, and this and that, you know, you've always I got think, both I think, sides. I think there was, I think everybody was pro, pro let's kick their ass, especially after we got bombed in Pearl I, Harbor. Yeah. And I, I'm just speaking you know? for myself here. I can't help but think you were shunned had you talked like that in the yeah. 40s, you know, that you I were against so. the war. Yeah, I mean, you'd, you'd have been in trouble, I think. Yeah, and I could be totally wrong, but... You, you know, the, the weird part about that, I don't know if weird's the right word, but, you know, we were so invested in the Western Front and in Germany, even though they didn't attack us. I mean, they did yeah. declare war on us just because they were allies or part Axis, of the Axis yeah. power, but we had a ton of German ancestry, but it's like, well, the Russian part of that... Ah, shit, them guys do whatever they want. We ain't, we ain't got no Russians. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Man, right. Let them do whatever they want. Yep. <laughs> you know that's right. Uh, you know, World War II starts because Germany invades Poland. What do we do when we free Poland? We give it to the Russians. Now, do you think the Polish people were better off underneath the Germans, where they had unlimited technology and all this that, or underneath the German reign or the the Russian reign, where they didn't have shit, no Agreed. food, no nothing? Agreed. I don't know. I kind of think the Polish people got screwed over in that deal. Yep. You know. Yep. And I, I will say this now, because he's passed away, and I, I'm going to clarify by saying this is, I do not endorse his behavior in any way, shape, or form, but I'm just saying, so my grandpa, he lied to get into the military at 16, and he yeah. went to World War II. But till the day that guy died, he hated Japanese people. I yeah. mean, fucking hated them. I mean, anything that was fucked up, goddamn Japanese piece of shit. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Even though it's a Mercedes Benz or what, it was a Japanese piece of shit. I've run into several World War II. Anybody that was in the Pacific Theater mm -hmm. was pretty much that That's way. where he was. He was in the like, Navy. He like, in the... like, that was pretty cruel. Like, the Western Front had its had its battles, obviously. Right. But I think the, the Pacific Theater was a whole nother level of yeah. gruesome and yep. bad and... Well, it was Vietnam. Only the Japanese had money. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Like, and we're a lot more brutal. I mean, a lot more brutal. Guys. Baton, death march, all that stuff. Like, eh, yep. Next level screwed up over there. Yep. I'll never forget, and I, I'm confident it was the very last conversation I had with my grandpa. He died of a, a freak operation at the hospital, but we was down there. I think it was on Mother's Day, and just was shooting the shit. And he'd gave me a bunch of old family pictures. And after I got him home, 
there was some of that stuff that I didn't know. So when we was out on a Mother's Day, we was going back through some of them pictures because I wanted him yeah. to tell me who was who and blah, blah, blah. And uh, he was always in the Navy. You like to say, light at 16, got in the Navy. And he said, you didn't know I was in the Marines, did you? And Dad said, uh, my dad said, well, because he thought you know, he was 87. Yeah. But, he, I mean, he had a clear mind. And, yeah. and Dad just thought he misspoke. He said, no, you in the Navy. And he said, no, I was in the Marines. And Dad's like, what are you talking about? He's like, I enlisted in the Navy, and I was in the Navy. And then when Guadalcanal come along, yeah, they come on the Navy ship, and they're like, all you fuckers right here, you're now Marines. Yeah, You're going in first. And it's like, we ain't trained for none of this shit. We're in the fucking Navy. And they're yeah. like, don't know, don't care. <laughs> yeah, you're bad. fucking Marines. You're, you're Marines today. So, yeah, so he was actually Simplify. in the Navy. Get yeah. in the front. <laughs> exactly. So he was actually in the Navy and the Marines. And then after that skirmish, whatever was done, I don't know if this was a two-month deal, whatever. Then yeah. they were enlisted back in the Navy, and he was a CB then, and built runways and huh. whatever else, buildings, you know, whatever. But And it was cool because that was the last conversation we ever had. Would have yeah. never known that in a million years. Yeah. And, you know, and Dad just thought he misspoke at first, but no, yeah. he was... And, been keeping that secret for... Yeah. Yep, sure enough. Yeah, and my dad would have been... For 70 years. 65 years old at the time or whatever. Never had a clue he was in the Marines and the Navy. Yeah, that's crazy. But that was just the way they rolled back then. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you guys, you're Marines yeah, now. Yeah, today, we need, today we need Marines. Here you guys go. <laughs> Hell, don't worry about the rifle. Just stand there, block a bullet, <laughs> yeah. would you please? But they always said in World War II that a lot of Midwestern kids joined the Navy because they'd never seen water. Mm-hmm. They wanted to see water. You know, the kids on the coast, they grew up with the ocean. They didn't care. They were whatever. But yeah. they said a lot of the people who enlisted in the Navy were out of the Midwest. Well, that's probably right. My great uncle was in the Navy. Yep. There wasn't a lot of Navy ships around here. Yep. Yeah. I don't. I don't know the the navy would have been cool, but man, being trapped on this. I mean, one I bad know. hit from a that, fucking torpedo, and that's it, boys. That's <laughs> better than going island to island with a rifle. <laughs> You're right, or a flamethrower, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm all good. That maybe the navy ain't sounding so bad on some of that. I'm not saying it was easy. No, don't take me the wrong way on that. But yeah, and to think back then, you wasn't any sort of technology per i mean it was for the yeah. day but compared to today i mean the, the sub's a whole nother level of i just watched u571 the other I did day too. i did too i watched about a month ago yeah i just watched it about a week ago and i'm like trying to run one of those where everything's hand valves there's no electronics no nothing like you, you got to turn this valve so far and then turn that valve so far and in the heat yeah. of battle like whoo yeah, yeah. I, i'm not claustrophobic it don't it wouldn't bother me to crawl under a house whatever but Man, a submarine, that's a whole different... I don't know if I could do that or not. I'm too tall for a sub. Yeah. I mean, that's what I keep going with. <laughs> yeah. I can't do that too tall. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, the whole Ocean Gate deal this summer where they tend to implode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you can only go so deep. Right? <laughs> Anybody that looked at that thing knew it was going to blow up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, those World War II guys... And I'm not talking taking nothing away from Vietnam anymore. No, no, I mean, no. I absolutely not. I don't mean that at all, but... Yeah, World War One especially was extremely crude. No technology yeah. whatsoever. I mean, it was yeah. fucking dig a, dig a trench and shoot back and forth. Yeah, and World War Two had considerably better technology than World War One, but still yeah. was way behind Vietnam. Well, what you got to give the World War Two credit guys for is, yes, they were welcomed home as champions, but you know they went like I said, a lot of them went at sixteen, seventeen, yeah. and didn't come home for four years. I yeah. mean, came home as as men yeah and just went right back to work if they had ptsd they didn't tell anybody they just grabbed a fifth of whiskey and went to work yep you know they, that right. was just the there was shit to be done and going to yep. work was way easier than yep. than, than taking and, germany correct so we'll just push through correct me if deal. i'm wrong because i wasn't in the military never have been but i think now you know if i'm in the army and they send me to afghanistan i think within about a year you're going to come home at least for a while you might go back yeah but you're going to you rotate back at some point. Yeah, where there was a lot of them guys went and were there for four fucking years. Yeah, without ever coming home. I mean, yeah, of course it's a different deal too. It was. You know? Yeah, I mean it was. It was a world war, and it was, and it truly was. We were short on people. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah, I mean our military was dog shit. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't mean that disrespectfully, but up in you know World War One was a joke as far as our military, and I, like I say, as far as we were just depleted, we didn't have nothing. Yeah, yeah. And by World War II, we'd start to build it back up. And then once the draft started, it's like, you know, it's shit or get off the pot now. Yeah, boy. I mean, it's time to build it fast. And boy, we did, and that's how we beat them. We outproduced them. Exactly. But our shit wasn't getting blown up. Our fact, we weren't having to build factories on the side of a mountain. Right. You know, we didn't have slaves to do it either. But it's a miracle that war never made it to U.S. soil. You know, I, yeah. which I know there was, you know, such and such in Alaska and, and Pearl Harbor. I, I don't mean it that way, but I'm talking the mainland U.S. I mean, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, the fact that we were well armed as a country was had a lot to do with that. It did. They knew that wouldn't uh, that wouldn't go so well. That would be a long bloody trip. That would be hard, though. You live in in a fucking war zone. I mean, could you imagine in, oh in 1940, you know, 44 Germany, 45, yeah. where I mean, it's, it's getting carpet bombed, just on the demolished daily. the entire city. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and back then there wasn't much much thought about collateral damage. You know, you just bomb the whole fucking city, and whatever happens happens. Yeah. Yeah, which in the middle of the big war is the way it should be. I agree. At at some level, you know, just picking out military targets. Yeah, sometimes you got to get a little more than that. That's sad, but that's that's true. Yeah. And, you know, the older you get, you do look at that stuff different. I mean, I would never encourage any of my kids to join the military now just because because we don't do shit like we did in World War II. You know, we fought that fucker to win. Yeah. Just plain and simple. Where now we go to Afghanistan, get a whole shitload of people killed, just leave all the fucking shit here, just yeah. here you can have it, which we, is going to come back to we haunt didn't us. We keep any territory. We didn't. Yeah. We didn't free anybody. We just. Yeah. Y- you or I are no more free today. Yeah. By going to Afghanistan than we were. I mean, and I'll still argue that. I mean, we're not. That was my dad's thing. And like in Vietnam, it's like, oh, Hill twenty one hundred and fifty. We're going to take it to the, tomorrow. Okay, what's at the top of it? Nothing. Just to Viet Cong. Yeah. Oh, so what we're going to do when we get taken? Oh, we're going to leave. We'll take it again tomorrow, and then two days from now, we'll have to take it again. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, this makes perfect sense. You know, at least in World War II, we were, there was a goal, Advancing, and it was uniform yeah. soldiers. You know, so you knew who the enemy was for the most part, and there was there was territory to take. And yeah. You weren't willingly giving the shit back. You didn't just yeah. go into Holland and take it, then back back out. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Holland's ours now, fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the part that always amazes me of that is, what the hell was everybody doing in Africa? I know. It's like, hey, let's send one of our best guys in Germany. Let's send him to Africa yeah. and uh, let him roll around over there because the other guy has it so screwed up. And it's like you talk, though, where stuff goes your way, whether it's the, the hand of God or whatever. You know, just like a deal like that, you take one of the the best German commanders yeah. and you send him to Africa of all places. Well, like, I mean, the guy clearly could have had... I weren't they doing that to bail the Italians out? I think it was, yeah. With and then, I mean, I, and I don't take this the wrong way. I like Rommel in the fact that Rommel was a good military guy, and he knew that Hitler needed to be taken down. So he wasn't a hundred percent all bad. Maybe ninety nine, but he wasn't a hundred percent all bad. But like, yes, he he dominated there for a while. But then once they figured out that he had an inside guy on U.S. communications, and they got rid of that guy, and they started feeding him false informations. He, he ended up losing more territory than he had gained. Yeah. They ended up further behind than when they started in the end. Once they, you know, it's pretty easy to to win if you if you got the other team's playbook. Yeah. I mean, ask ask Harbaugh at Michigan. You know, apparently, yeah. apparently you're not supposed to do that, which yeah. it just makes common sense to me that you would watch the other team's signs. But whatever. Um, but yeah, once once we took that away from him, he didn't fare near as well. But yeah, uh, to me, that's the part of war that intrigues me the most. Yeah, is. The the behind the scenes, the side stories. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. love that stuff. Yeah, like what? I don't even know what the Italians were going after in Africa. Uh, there had to be I, something. I assume natural resources of some fashion. Yeah, which still baffles me to this day. Not to change the subject, but like Africa could be an absolute powerhouse in this world. I mean, they got more natural resources from top to bottom of that continent than yeah. you could ever imagine. But yeah. they can't quit killing each other. No, nope. to capitalize they, on they, any they of it, they can't manage it. They and it's sad. They cannot manage. It is sad. It is sad. But, you know, uh, like on a side note, what's your thought? Everybody goes on and on and on about German engineering. You know, what do you think is a mechanic? Is it good or is it bad? I don't it know. It just screams complicated to me. Yeah. Oh, like I've seen that on German diesel tractors. People yeah. just rave over. But from what I've seen, it's like it's a little bit complicated. Not saying it's not good or bad. You know, their machine work was all probably great back in the day. In this, but it's always complicated. Yeah. Like they always take the long way around. But I think over there, like... You're not going to travel 30 miles to this machine shop. Everybody's going to lay the mill in their garage back then or whatever. Well, we'll just make this and so on and so forth. That, like, that's neat. But it just looks complicated to me. Yeah. You know. Makes sense. For the most part. Like, the quality is there for the most part. But, like, in the world of tractor pulling, okay? What, uh, you name me one vehicle that's powered by anything German. Yeah, that's true. There isn't any. There's a shitload of Allisons, at least at one time. You know, now they're hard to come by, but... Every modified pulling tractor at one time had an Allison on it. Same by pulling German stuff. Like, there's there's Allison teams in Germany right now to this day. They're not using any German engines. Yeah. 
to my knowledge, Germany never had an engine that was worth a shit for anything like that. Like yeah. I don't know what they used in their tanks and their in their big boats and this and that, but apparently it wasn't that good. Yeah. Makes sense. You know. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe they maybe the, maybe they all got annihilated and there was just none left. Maybe right. maybe that's what it was. Well, I always wondered. Like I never had a German diesel tractor of any kind. You know, the guys that got them just rave about. Them. I'm not saying they're they're not good. I I don't know, but it's is it sort of like a John Deere sound guard? You know, the oh, this is the greatest fucking thing in the world. It's like well, I always ask never... my dad. I'm like, how'd you work on those back then? He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, we well, didn't have any metric tools. Well, come with a toolkit. I'm like, yeah. A set of end wrenches doesn't tear the engine down and put it back together. You're not torquing a head down with an end wrench. Yeah, you know, like. Oh, and you know, we had this, that, and the other. I'm like, you guys couldn't have had shit for metric tools back then. I wouldn't have thought. I mean, like shit, said, even when we were kids, there wasn't much metric shit no, back then. No. I mean, even Absol- in our life. Absolutely then. not. Um, uh, the German diesels don't wind me up any. I always avoid those. I'll take the American diesel every time. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I guess, do, do they run forever? I mean, are, are they fairly quality, just a bitch to work on, or are they just not as good, do you feel like? I don't know. They're okay. They won't. I mean, the American version of the same size is better. Yeah. So, what, what was different on the the German, like a six fifty six with a German diesel? What was so different about the German diesel? I mean, oh, I know you showed me something on the fuel pump was totally the, different. The, the fuel pumps were always a little, a little goofy. They weren't super popular. Like the American stuff had well, the later ones would had a Model one hundred on it, which was fairly simple. That was American Bosch stuff. The, the German diesel pumps a little goofy. You know, it's manual kill, which doesn't really hurt anything, but a little odd for everybody else to just shut up. Well, I eat stuff all shut off with the throttle. Nobody else right. can figure that out. But, but uh, you know, I'm trying to think here. Like, you can't get the – I'm trying to think. Boy, it's been a long time since I had one of those apart. But, like, you can't get the rod through the counterweights, if I remember right, or something like the counterweights overhang overhang that. There's something goofy there. Like, you got to – Slide in and then roll the crank around, and th- th- there's some dumb shit there. Why did IH ever go with that German diesel? What was the draw? My, my personal opinion is they had a factory in Germany that could produce stuff, and I don't think the U.S. factories could keep up. Gotcha. Well, I think it was part of it. Like, yep. m- maybe I'm wrong there, but that's always kind of the way it seemed to me. Like, they were still using German diesels clear into the 32 and 3088s. No shit. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Those I thought German that was diesels. like a 656. 886s were all German diesels. Like, no shit. I didn't know that. I, personally, my personal opinion is the American plants were union and they couldn't produce enough. So we, well, we, we still got this shit over here in Germany. We'll just keep putting those in. I'll be damned. Yeah, they don't wind me up any. I'm not. I'm not seeking out anything German. A German diesel for. Did they that. use that motor in trucks or anything, or just strictly? Nah, tractors? just tractors. Just tractors. Yeah, just tractors. Yeah, like I, I never their, their truck business is so big at that point in time. Like, I think they were maxed out on capacity. Probably. Like I say, a 686, you could get either way. Well, what, why do I want the other version? Well, I think that's all they could get of the American version, so they had to put Germans in some of them, you know? Yep. Huh. Yeah, I didn't realize, like, an 886, which is rare around here. I'm yeah. not saying it was a rare tractor, but around here it was. Yeah. I didn't realize them was all German diesel. Yeah, I, I think. I'm pretty sure. I'll be damned. Everyone I ever saw was. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't know. You know, everybody just raves about them, but I... I didn't know if it was. They don't wind me up any. They're yeah. like they're, so they're not bad, but you put much power to them, and then you know, head gasket will leak or this, that, and the other. We, Dad and I actually fabbed up. We had a guy just last summer. What hell was this summer? And I took a couple pictures of it. I think I should have did TikTok on. It, I didn't. Um, with a seven fifty six German diesel, got a bigger auger, needed more power, wanted a turbo kit on it. So of course you can't buy M and W turbo kits anymore for it. So we fabbed up the whole deal and. It made it come out of the stock hole in the hood. It actually come out really nice. Yeah. And it had pretty good power when we were done, you know, enough, you know, and uh, it was kind of neat. Are them things hard to get parts for the German diesel itself now? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, your common stuff, pistons and that stuff, probably not too bad, but yeah. your other little knickknacks, yeah, it's just getting hard to come by now. But that was the only thing different was the the, diesel, the German diesel motor, nothing else on the tractor was any different, right? No, the rest of it was. Yeah, so I assume the tractor was built here with the motor come from Germany. And yeah, I assume, like, yeah. yeah. I assume so, yeah. And it's funny that, that now, like deer, you know, most of that shit, that that size of a tractor has all went back to being made in Germany yeah. now. You know? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. My mom actually just toured that plant here yeah. this summer. Yeah. You, uh, well, there's not a tractor under 100 and some horse made in the United States, is there? Correct. By anybody. That's, Right, to my knowledge. Yeah. yeah. That's correct. Which is, is crazy to think of, but that's the way it is. Yeah. I can't help but think that this ain't going to come back to haunt us one of these fucking days, moving all this shit 
You would think. Out of here, but what do I know? I guess that's why I'm not running the, the show, but. I don't know. It's, uh, it's a little scary when you think about, you know, wartime production and how yeah. dependent we are on other countries. That, like, there again, that's how we won World War II. We weren't. Exactly. You know, we had the iron ore here. We had the, the yep. factories here. We had the manpower. Yep. When Rockola Jukebox is going to start making M1 Grands, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. we don't even have that now. I mean, yeah. Yeah. International Harvester was making them. Like, yeah. I mean, at one point in time, there was a bunch of companies making M1 Grands. I mean, yeah. it was shit you've never even thought of, you know? Yeah. yeah. Ford was making airplanes. Like, they told Henry Ford that they needed more airplanes and. I don't remember what the deal on it was now. They built that plant, and they were hoping for X number, and he's like, we can blow that out of the water. And, like, they surpassed what, what they thought they could produce by a huge margin, you know. But Henry Ford was kind of pretty good at the assembly line thing. Yeah. So that was yeah. kind of his deal. And it makes you wonder how many of them guys, Henry Ford, Rockefellers, all them guys that made just fortunes off of going to war. Yeah. You know, I'm sure they all had their hands in it. I mean. Yeah, Henry Ford was a was a pacifist though wasn't he like yeah he was, he was, he yeah, was that against was always, the war but they yep. they talked him into producing stuff for it because because yep. he had the capability to do it but yep yeah that was always a, kind of the big hoop to do that he was not necessarily against it but he was just a pacifist that, wasn't that airplane factory the one that he ended up building was like it was supposed to be like a mile long and it, it but that was going to run it into a democrat district so he turned it 90 and run it and, really and put an l in it i think no shit so that it wouldn't bump into the other district i think I'll be I think I read that somewhere. Yeah. And then later on, he sold it to GM to build transmissions or something, which, excuse me, always baffled me a little bit. Like, you're building airplanes, and then you end up building transmissions. They're like, transmissions pretty small. Airplanes pretty big. Yeah. But, yeah, I think they humped out a bunch of those. You know, I've never went back and actually looked at the stats. You're like, how many planes did we lose in World War II? You know, how many aircraft carriers how many you know it'd be mind-boggling it would be mind-boggling like at one time ford had some badass engine that was like all next level shit that they wanted to use in planes and tanks i think but since he wasn't politically connected they're like yeah yeah, that's pretty good yeah we're not gonna use it though thanks though no kid so then they end up cutting a few cylinders off it was a v12 i think originally and then they cut it down to a v8 for something else but it was you know he put thousands of man hours into it and it was it was like the ultimate engine but they're like yeah yeah we don't really like you though so yep. you're not getting the contract yeah so see that shit was even prevalent yeah. back yeah. then you thanks know. but no thanks yeah you're you're good which we i assume really was a lot of them tanks back then gas powered not diesel i i don't know i mean i assume diesel wasn't real popular then i mean you know i don't know i i don't know i think it was some of both yeah but you know like the airplane thing like the allison was cool but it wasn't quite enough. Like that one plane wouldn't really fly, and then they put the Merlin in it, which was the British version of the Allison, more or less, with a little more technology. And they're like, "Oh shit, now this thing's pretty badass." Yeah, it just needed more power. Most things in life can be solved with more power. Tony. That's right. Now, my grandpa had a brother that he was in the glider division, which I don't think hmm. you're going to fucking get me in this paper airplane and no. put a rope on it and then get me up in the air and then cut the fucking rope and then we're going to glide into fucking yeah. Germany or where. That seems like one and, a one-and-done mission. Yeah. yeah. What'd they call them? Uh, 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 not sky coffins, but it was something like, you know, basically yeah. you're dead once you get in this fucking thing. Yeah. I mean, it, but he made it through, but, yeah, it was not a good deal. I got to think the alumni parties for those were pretty pretty mm-hmm. thin, though. It, wouldn't, it couldn't have been a lot of guys made it out no, of that. No, I, I don't think so either. You're basically getting in a wooden structure with paper canvas on it and you're gonna glide this bitch right on down into the fucking front lines we you know you think about world war ii and it's like you know when the germans took poland a lot of their shit was still on horseback yeah and then by the end they had jet airplanes yeah that's crazy you know, that's crazy in less than 10 years yeah i mean and hitler's like nah we don't really need those <laughs> if yeah. they'd have if they would have launched that program when it was available holy cow yeah by the end when they were trying to do it they literally didn't have anywhere to launch them from yeah they were had, have you ever seen that where they Move them up the mountain sideways yeah, I have, yep. and try to launch them off the top of that mountain, but we just kept bombing the shit out of it, you know. But that escalator ish type deal is still kind of sort of there, yeah. You know, that's the crazy thing. You look at the landscape over there in some of those places that got oh bombed God. heavily. And it's like, where'd this huge ass hole come ah, from? A bomb, yeah, <laughs> misguided yep. one. Maybe it didn't hit where it's supposed to, but there's a big ass hole there, and we never took the time to fill it in because, yeah. you know, and when you start talking over there, there is no way you could have fought soldiers of that i mean it's it's straight up and down mountains i mean yeah there's no way you could have done it yeah 
Yeah, it is crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. And that's where I need to go back and read up more on like World War One. I. I don't know much about World War One. No, other than I the don't fact, either. And a lot of people don't realize either, though, that that's where a lot of your chemical warfare, you know, they use yeah. mustard gas and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, it like was nasty. Heavily on yeah. World War One. Well, about killed Hitler. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then somebody let him live. Yep. You know, they had him dead to rights and, and let him go. I'd like to be that guy. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Could have. Ain't that funny, though? Could have wow. saved six million people. Yeah. It's that, the most primitive that's, numbers. Yeah, that's just the Jews. We're not counting everybody else. Yeah. That, Easily save six million people, but I yeah. let him go. Yeah. That's just the world playing out in, in bigger hands than, than you have. You know? Yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, that's, that's why he had his mustache like he did. Yeah. Because his the, mask was the mask. Yeah. yeah. When I, once I get popular, it will be the style. Yeah, that didn't really play out. No, it didn't. Do you think he really committed suicide or do you think he slipped out the back? I don't know enough about it to comment either way. I truly don't. I mean, I don't trust the Russians. Right. And then whatever data they had later on kind of proved not to be him. You know, there's some pictures from South America that look an awful lot like him. Right. But can a guy with that kind of ego just hang out in South America for another 40 years? Like, yeah, I, uh, without, without trying to flex a little bit like right. i don't know i mean obviously tons of germans ended up in in south america sure. i mean you you see the documentaries on that it's like oh yeah that that's not native structures that's that's yeah. german shit there yeah so obviously they made it there some of them i don't know that he could have held it off unless they once they got him off all the drugs and they're finally like hey dude yeah i could see that going either way i i can see him being so proud that he refused to leave and I also can see him being on the next thing, smoking and been out of there 20 hours before they ever thought about it. Because when you bring out the modern times, Saddam Hussein was a lot like a Hitler. Yeah. And, you know, he ended up fleeing on the run, found him in a friggin' Yeah, found him in a hole. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I could go with, I mean, my gut says no, I think he actually died. Whether it was suicide or actually got clipped, I don't well, know. At least we pulled Saddam to, to justice yeah. and had him on trial and this, that, and the other, yeah. as opposed to... Bin Laden that we supposedly got who probably died of diabetes yeah. four years before that. Right. But, uh, yeah, after we funded him for 25 years. Yeah, exactly. Couldn't figure out how he rose to power, even though we've been funneling yeah. him shit. Yeah, Bill Clinton had him dead to rights numerous this times. Time. Nah, we don't, nah, nah we're not going to get fine. tangled up in that. Yeah, he ain't that bad a guy. It'll be fine. Yeah. Still going to have a hard time convincing me that those dipshits could fly a plane, but hey, whatever. Yeah, that's, uh, and like you said earlier, you know, at, in the heat of the moment when that all happens, you know, th- this is what you saw, this is what you think happened, you're all gung-ho. But then once once things have cooled off and 10 years later you're like, eh, I don't know. I don't Seems know. a little sketchy. I'm not ready to just jump out and say. Because there's always some side story, right? Like, okay, these planes hit the Twin Towers, right? And, you know, September 12th, we're armed to arm, we're united. We're going to find these assholes and we are hunting them down. Which I'm all for, and that was the, September 12th was a great day in America. It was for the unity and the fact that we banded together for the first time since probably World War II, honestly. Yeah. But then you get the backstory later. It's like, well, why'd they immediately haul that scrap steel off? Like, clear out of the country. What we did keep is locked away in some warehouse that you can't get to. Like, there's just so many things that seem a little bit fishy on all that. The shit at the like, Pentagon, we literally have a flash is all we have. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and, and I'm not saying. It I, can't be I the only remember. camera they had on that deal. Yeah. You this know? is the and fucking Pentagon. I mean, and that thing sets where it sets, so it can't be hit. And magically, this guy that's take like 20 minutes worth of flying lessons and, you know, played it on Nintendo can, can fly it in there. I don't know. Where'd the wings go? Eh, we're not sure. They never must never hit there. It just has a round hole. Happened yeah. to hit the computer where the two point three trillion dollar yeah. information yeah. Yeah. was that's, kept. That's the part that yeah. we forgot to mention was yeah. the two point three trillion dollar. <laughs> yeah, we just we just had it on that one computer and it. Yep, I guess gone. the investigation's over. Yep. Gone. Damn, damn the luck. You know, we and, happened to mention it yesterday, and today it's gone. And you you hate to be that away, but I guess this day and age. I leave anything on the table. I'm not but saying... I think you have to be that way at some point, though. I do, too. Because there's so many things that we're told. Fluoride. We'll just use fluoride. When I was a kid, you know, you go to the dentist, they're packing this stuff with fluoride and bite down on this and this, that, and the other. It turns out fluoride ain't so good for you. Yep. Well, yeah. Okay, well, thanks for giving it to me a whole bunch. Exactly. You know, it, there's a bunch of that stuff. It's like... 
And then, just the and half then truths, you when know? you even take it to the next level, and I'm not saying this is true. Don't misunderstand me here on the podcast. But you know, then you'll see the the other level of that. That fluoride actually makes people docile. That like basically, yeah. you know, you're just kind of a pacifist. Then you know, and it, when you stop and think about it, it's like, well, shit. Maybe there's something to do that because it's like nobody cares nowadays. It's like yeah. fuck it, you know. Yeah, just let it roll on. So yeah. maybe they're maybe they're onto something there. I mean, there's all kinds of that stuff. Like I, you, I even you read get a tied thing, up in some of those rabbit holes. I read a thing one time, and I'm not saying this is true either. Don't misunderstand this here. But they figured out that people who smoke cigarettes are more likely to be rebellious. Yeah, and so that's why. Governments want to outlaw smoking because they clearly don't give a shit about your health. We got legalized abortion over here. Yeah. But yeah, oh, we're all concerned about your health and you can't do this. You know, yeah. so when you see it from that aspect, it's like, well, that does make some sense. But they figured out that, and, and back in wartime, that's why they gave cigarettes to people because yeah. even though I know this is wrong, fuck it, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. And so they figured out the people who smoke cigarettes, t- and it has something to do with the nicotine, that they tend to be. More rebellious. Yeah, I so, can see that. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying that's what I read. I'm not I, saying it's true. How it makes some sense. I mean, meanwhile, the same government that's trying to get you to quit is the same government that's subsidizing tobacco. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so they're making yeah. it on both sides. And then you hear about all this 5G shit. You know how it fucked with your brain waves and this and that. And yeah. I don't know. I don't. I'm not. I don't know. Yeah i I think cell phones have a lot of negative effects, just in general. Like. I need to be better about putting mine in a different room. Yeah. And a, a quasi doctor here explained some stuff on to me that a while back. And I tried it a couple of days and it did help. I'm still yeah. too dumb. I usually plug it in next to the bed, but I, I shouldn't, you know, I yep. shouldn't, but I do just in case of a, I wasn't doing it. And then dad got sick and I'm like, well, I got to have my phone close. Right. But I should at least put it further away. Yeah. Other side of the room next room over or whatever where I could still hear it, but it's not right there gamma raying me or whatever the hell it is that's doing. Well, the, the tentacles of the government are so big now that, you know, you're never going to stop it. And everybody, Oh, you know, they're, they're going to push us too far. We're going to have the second revolution. We're fucking way past that. There, there's no such thing as rolling a government program back. Yeah. That never happens. And, and why, and why is that? We can always come out with a new one, but for whatever reason, you can't roll the old well, one. I know we got people dependent on it. We can't ever yeah. roll it back. That yeah. just, I call bullshit on that, and I will to the day I die. Did you ever watch the TV show Alias? Never did. Okay. No. Well, quick side note on it. Jennifer Garner ends up being a double agent, but originally is in this organization that's anti-American, but she doesn't know that. And so when she figures it out and gets pulled in by the government, and then they're going to go after this, and she wants to take this office down, and they finally pull her out a, a basically a, a map, a flow chart. Of this isn't about, you know, cutting the head off the monster. It's about killing the monster. And they show her the real flow chart of how deep this organization is. And it's tied into so many things. Like, just, yeah. just taking out this one office ain't going to do it. You know, initially she thinks that's all there is. But there's way more to it than that. And that's where we're at on, on so many fronts. Like, Oh, I agree. You know, you always hear stuff about the New World Order, the One World Government, and this, that, and the other. And, like, the powers that be on that deal are putting so many pieces in play all the time. You and I moving one piece around the board is ain't gonna make a hill of beans. Ain't, ain't, uh, when ain't they hold all the it. cards and yeah. they're nine steps ahead of you, <laughs> yeah, you they're can, way more than that. They got all the money and all the yeah, cards. Exactly. You know, it's like trying to beat five casinos at once. Yeah. Just just think about it. If let's just pretend that you are truly at the top of whether it's the new world order whatever you want to call all this that you you're you're the top 10 players in the world you control everything yeah. so i can listen on your cell phone i can watch the videos you make on social media i can listen to your podcast i'm getting a pretty good idea of what the feel is for the enemy here because yeah. they're just they're openly giving it to me yeah and yeah i mean they hold all the cards i mean they're they're nine steps ahead of anybody else yeah and I've always said a hundred times, you can't get America unified enough now to do anything. No. It wouldn't no. matter if well, I come out tomorrow and said lettuce is the most healthiest thing you can either be. A million people that would give me reasons why it's not, and you yeah. just look at eggs. Yeah, in my lifetime, eggs are going to kill me or save me at least nine times. Yep. You know, fortunately, I like eggs, so I never gave them up, even when they said they were bad. Exactly. But you know, there's a ton of little stuff on that. It's like. And they could, within the age of social media, 
they can manipulate you so easy. Like, all they have to do is make some video viral with one little smidgen of information or one dance or this or one little item that you need to buy. And next thing you know, 20 million people are doing yep. exactly what they wanted them to Agreed. do. And we're all guilty of it. Yeah. Like, we're all they, guilty of it. You know, they've kind of quasi-proved it during elections. You know, Facebook is showing you yeah. certain stuff and this guy certain stuff. You know, mm-hmm. so even though we think we're all saying the same thing, we're clearly not. We're not. So. And it's all on how they spend words and this, oh, that, and the other. For I mean, sure. Just just pull up Yahoo News sometime and look at the headlines. Like, the people that they're clearly backing, it's always spun to the positive. Sure. It wouldn't matter if be like, how. Oh, John Doe ran over a dog, but it was a rabbit dog, and it didn't hurt yeah. anybody. It was it, nobody owned it. This, that, and the other. Meanwhile, that, yeah, that dog Donald, Donald Trump could have jumped out, give vaccines to twenty five dogs, saved them, took them in, put them in the back of his truck, took them to a yep. shelter, got them fed, watered, and be like, "Yeah." But he was saving rabbit dogs that are killing people. Yeah, you know. yeah. And his truck was polluting on his way to the to, yeah. the, to the shelter to do it. And, Agreed. And all this stuff, like. You know, people argue against that, but like, just look at the headlines. Like, did Melania Trump ever do anything to hurt anybody? And there is never a positive headline about her. No, never. You know, Michael Obama was supposedly super hot. I don't know to who, yeah. but supposedly she was the picture of fitness, he, this, that, and the other. Yeah. I'm like, meanwhile, Melania's pretty good looking, pretty nice gal. Never said a mean word about anybody that I can ever find. No. But there is never a positive headline no. about her. Nope. Never. Once they took control of the media, they controlled it all. Yeah. When they control what's in front of you. Did you ever see the James Bond movie? It was with Pierce Brosnan, where uh, it was his ex-girlfriend or whatever, ends up with the guy that's in control of the media. It was Tomorrow's News Today or whatever. I don't remember what the name of the Bond movie was. But that was the, this news media mogul's slogan, Tomorrow's News Today. And he got to the point he would create the news. That way he could be the first one to scoop it, mm-hmm. you know, because he had all the power. Exactly. And he could tell you exactly what he wanted you to know. I'm like, and they were basically there. Yeah. Unfortunately. Break that all the way down to your kids. If you just told your kid, if you homeschooled your kids and you could just tell them every day, you could have you could have your kids believe in anything you wanted them to believe. Yeah. By the time they were ten years old that they didn't go to public school or yeah. watch a TV or whatever. Yeah. Plain and simple. Because the only information they get is from you, and you can make the whatever information you want. I, I need to grab one of my kids' history books sometime because they'll they'll talk about stuff once in a while. I'm like, well, that's not really accurate. Like what you're saying there. Like whatever. FDR was the greatest president of yeah, all time. He's yeah. the fucking worst. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. They, I mean, they sold that to us. Yeah. Like, oh, FDR brought power to the country. Yeah, not yeah. really. But okay. Well, what about all the bad shit he was doing? Well, yeah. we're gonna we're not gonna yeah, mention we, that. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. Fine. I mean, sure, he partnered with Stalin, who was our sworn enemy. Yeah. But I mean, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna go after Hitler, but we're gonna partner with Stalin to do it. Now, yeah. does that seem like a great plan? Yep. Yeah. To this day, ninety nine percent of the stuff you read, FDR was the greatest president of all fucking time, and that yeah. fucking guy was the worst. He's yeah. for real, responsible for most of the socialism we have today. Exactly. Yeah, him and Woodrow Wilson. Yep. Oh, yeah, Woodrow Wilson was even fucking worse. Yeah. Because he was blatant about his. Yeah, absolutely. Had a stroke, and then his wife had to take over. Yeah. Yeah. League of Nations, all that stupid shit. Yeah, all the bad shit. You can trace back to those two dipshits, for the most part. Yeah, it's appalling. Yeah. I'm I'm convinced once George Washington left office... It was a pretty rapid downhill slide from there. Yeah, like it was. Look, once we ran out of the founding fathers' presidents, which really didn't last very long because they didn't live to be that old, and they didn't run for office when they were seventy-five. If they lived to be seventy-five, like we ran out of those guys pretty quick. Yeah, we did. Then it was a pretty slippery slope. So take this day and age. You know, our whole life when we were little kids, at the time, you know, we're. I remember a history teacher in seventh grade. I think. Talking to you, we were, I think we were seven or eight trillion dollars in debt then, which was mind boggling. Yeah. You know, we're 33 trillion now. Yeah. But, you know, our whole lives, we've heard, oh, we're going to default. We're going to default. We're gonna, and we never have. But where is the breaking point? I mean, we're getting close. The interest I mean, is 33 starting, to trillion, guys, starting to rack up. That's what it, so, so, I mean, is that number 35 trillion? Is it 60 trillion? Is it 100? Where, where is that number at? I don't Honestly, know. Honestly, think since the, the moments ago when you said trillion, the interest on that money, would set you and I up for a lifetime. Oh, absolutely. The interest on that money in that short 30 yeah. seconds here would last you and I the rest of our lives. Yeah. You know, that's how fast that shit's racking up. Yeah. But 
Yeah, I don't know where the where the ceiling is, but we got to be getting close. And and actually, how does and maybe this should be a whole new podcast in of itself. So we owe thirty three trillion, but do we owe all that to China? Do we owe one trade to China, but something over here? Do we owe it to Joe Blow Construction Company here? That my thing is, we owe it to China and be like. Pfft. Sorry about your luck. We're resetting the clock to zero. Piss that, off. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> we so, don't like you guys that much anyway. Yeah, so how does how does this work? I, that's where I get foggy on it. You know, when you always hear that, oh, we donated, you know, $200 billion to Ukraine, but we borrowed it from China. Well, why don't we just call the Chinese and be like, hey, yeah. why don't you guys give $100 billion to, yeah. to Ukraine, cut out the middleman, save, I mean. save everybody some money. Yeah. You know? I don't know why we would want to borrow money from other countries if we, if we are, in fact, borrowing it from them. Right. And where are the Chinese coming up with all this money that they can that's loan That's what us? I mean. Yeah, so so I, that's know? what the whole thing, it gets a little foggy to me because yeah. uh, you know damn good well, local bike here, if you and I w- both went and borrowed $10 million, yeah. and then they find out that we're just uptown just at the local bar just fucking handing money out like hotcakes, they're going to yeah. be like, well, fuck you. Yeah. That's over. Yeah. But but it's like this train never ends. It just so, keeps on chugging. So yeah. where does it come from? I just don't understand this. Printing presses, I suppose. And we're getting to the point we can't hardly print it as fast as we're spending that's it, what though. i mean i've in my safe i've got a hundred trillion dollar bill from zimbabwe that when they inflation and this has been yeah. 15 20 years ago their inflation was so rapid that a hundred trillion dollar bill which i have one would not buy you anything yeah. and after they printed them they printed them in germany and after they printed them zimbabwe didn't have enough money to give Germany for the fucking bills to ship them to their country, so Germany just sells them now as novelties. But it's a hundred trillion dollar bill. Wow. Back to our Africa thing on where they could be, but where they're not. Exactly. Yeah. All the natural resources, nobody to manage it. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I've always wondered is as far as who do you flip the bird to? It's like, well, you know what? Fuck you. We're not paying you today. I mean, yeah. Is it the Federal Reserve? Is it the fact that you've just diluted the money so bad because you printed so much? I I just I don't understand where the thirty three trillion which wraps us back into Kennedy exactly. <laughs> you know, like it, it it just there's there's layers of the onion, Tony, and we we're not allowed to peel them off. And if we do, it's bad. I mean, yeah. people don't realize how much thirty three trillion dollars is. I mean, it's a lot of money. And like they always talk about reducing the deficit. So you mean to tell me that we're going to roll this back to zero magically? Say, you know, oh, we cut four hundred billion off the debt. Okay, so you bought us ten minutes. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. We, they never make any major changes. No. Like those guys shouldn't get paid until the budget's balanced. Agreed. And, there, and there's debt service in there, and there's actually paying it down. Agreed. That should be a federal law, but we never do it. No, you never know? have, never will. Yeah, they ain't about to look into it tomorrow. Nope. They're they're not going to do it. So yeah, I I just don't understand. How this works. I just, for the life of me, I've racked my brain and I just can't figure out who we owe. I mean, who is going to knock on the door tomorrow and say, You owe me 33 trillion? I mean, I can tell you who we owe. God. And yeah. he's going he's gonna to collect the debt one of these days. Yeah. That he is. Yeah. He's going to be like, You know, I set you guys up with the, with the best there ever was in everything. And, and then 200 and some years, you guys ran it in, ran it in the yeah. ground. You yeah. know, of course, the Bible never says it's getting any better. So. Yeah, unfortunately, I think we're on the we're on the slide. We're on that big yellow slide. And we've hit the first hump. Yeah, and we're like, well, this is fun. I wonder what's at the next one. But have you ever have you ever stopped and thought about wars? How at the end of the day, it's literally two dipshits. They each run a country, and they say, you know what? I want your country, so we're just going to go slaughter all these innocent people. I'm still going to set my cushy office. Don't really care if I get it. I get it. If I don't, I don't. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's it's all bullshit. It would be no difference than to me today. Says you own eighty acres, fuck it. I want it. So me and my kids load up our arms and we come. We we all just shoot it out until one of us has the eighty acres. Yeah, and it's just complete and utter bullshit. Yeah, I it, mean, look at the Roman Empire. Yeah, at the end, like, well, shit, the Romans are coming. Ah, shit, they got a lot of cool stuff. Like, yeah. they'll make this a better place. All right, we'll let them have it. Well, shit, we can't manage all this. Like, we're too, we're too spread thin. Yeah. Huh? I guess we're. I guess it's all going to crumble away. Yeah. Could you, know? you imagine if we break this down to the micros? That that that's how you get land in the U.S. If you're going to fight it out, yo. I'm farming a thousand acres. I want the next eighty over here. So load up the fucking guns. We're going to take yeah. it. Hop in the Buick. Yeah. We're going to get eighty acres. Yeah. Yeah. 
But, I mean, there are still countries that are that way. Like, they are. There's places in South America, if you squat on it long enough, it's yours. It's yours, you know. I mean, you got to defend it, but, yeah. Maybe we should start that program. Maybe we should. I Some of those big landowners are too old to defend it. Honey. They are. <laughs> and I know some people that are armed to the teeth around here. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. But Yeah. Yeah, it's a crazy mixed up world. And I and I gotta think that our ancestors thought the same thing. Like the holy cow, it's getting way out of hand here, you know. And in their time it was from what they'd seen to where it got, but it's you know, it's an exponential curve. It's it's ramping fastly. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Whatever. I mean it we, we can't stop it, but No, we can't. I mean you can you can vote all you want, you can bitch all you want, you can do whatever, not pay your taxes, but I promise you it's coming. Yeah. Whether you want it or not, <laughs> your your best bet instead of worrying about any of that is to is to get right with the Lord and uh, pray a lot and and get squared away there because that's the, ultimately that's the only way you're getting out of it. Yeah, you know it's going to be what it's going to be in the short term. At this point in my life, I'm more worried about the long term. Yep, eternal damnation sounds like yep. a long time to me. And you know, so actually, I'm just worrying about that at this point. When like, you read I can't the book, stop the other stuff. When you read the book of Revelation, and I'm not trying to get religious on people, but you know, that's how the Antichrist comes to power is worldwide economic collapse. Yes. He's the only guy that brings you out of it, so you're like, oh my God, this guy's the greatest thing in the that's world. That's how Hitler got to power. Exactly. You know? Yep. And so, you know, we were always kind of the home base, superpower, look to the U.S. I mean, yeah. you know, if your last glimmer of hope yeah. Is lost. Like Reagan go said, there. we're the last best place. Yeah. If, if, if it collapses here, there's no place to yeah. go. And he was 100% right. Yeah. And but I feel you, like now we're. <laughs> you name me another place, but still to this day, there's yeah. no other place I want to go. Sure. Like, For there's sure. no place that's better. Yep. You know, but damn, we are messing it up bad. Yeah. Because I'm like you. Everybody always says, well, yeah, you, we're going to be screwed when China calls in our debt because I'm the type, if I take that phone call, I'm like, uh, yeah, fuck you. Sorry. <laughs> You're wrong Chinese, number. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But, but once again, I don't know how it all works, so Yeah. It's probably whatever. Probably a little bigger than we can grasp at some of those, yeah. you know. What well, it just always cracks me up on politicians. They throw billions around like, like you nothing. like you and I would do two dollars at the bar. Yeah. You know, for a tip. Yep. You know, oh you brought me a beer, here's a buck or two. Yep. They're throwing two hundred billion around on those deals, like, oh, you get a hundred billion, you get ten billion, you you know. It just it boggles the mind. Like, we can't even fathom the numbers. No, it is. It's unbelievable. I'd probably be a terrible city manager or a large government guy, but I'm like, yeah, we could. there's got to be a way to do that for half. Like, yeah. I just assume that any anything the government's involved in could be cut in half. Agreed. Easily. easily. They're easily overspending by 50%. Yep. And that would be day one. We're cutting all government budget, budgets by 50%. We'll work forward or backwards from there. Agreed. You know. I would like to know the post office budget versus UPS's budget. Oh, it's got to be mind-boggling. UPS clearly turns a profit. Do, but where is the – who's spending what on what? Like, where's the – Where's the, and I realize the post right. office doesn't necessarily have to make money. But it shouldn't lose a shit ton Agreed. of money. Agreed. Like, I realize they have to service everybody, and they're going house to house and delivering mail, and that's a service, and the government's providing that, and that's cool. But, like, are we, if we're blatantly just losing money on this, like, maybe we put somebody from the private sector in charge of this. Yeah. Because almost, isn't it a little bit easier if I'm the local post office here, and I know that I've got 150 houses in town, and I'm going to go to one of them houses every day. Yeah. I should be able to budget that pretty good i've got a lot of data now that i go to every single house yeah, every day you got like 100 years worth of data yeah so i can't i know i can't go under this number because i've been doing it for 100 years and this yeah. one's gonna take yeah so i should at least be able to break even minimum the, the sad part is in today's postal world the mail's not that much faster than when it was no. on horseback no it's like not. in the last two or three years it has went to pot yeah and i don't really understand how that got so screwed up like that doesn't seem like it's that difficult of a deal yeah. with computers and automation and, and AI and everything else. So you ought to be able to figure some of that out before it even yeah. happens. Hey, yep. Newsflash, Christmas is coming. Mail is going to get increased with Christmas cards, et cetera. You know? Yep. Like, I seen stamps are going up again in January, whatever, which that's probably part of the reason, again, 
I don't know that in 1989 you could have bought a forever label at UPS. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> where, true. Where yeah. the post office, you want some forever stamps? Oh, yeah, we're, we're just banging it. They'll never go up from here on out. Do no, they still honor the forever stamp? I have no idea. I, I assume... I mean, I, mean, what, I would be highly pissed if they did. It's a fucking forever stamp, you yeah, motherfuckers. Exactly. I didn't buy enough of them, obviously, but <laughs> yeah, there's an investment. Apparently, I should have bought 200 billion of those and yeah. sold them off after the fact. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't know. Does Fe- or, uh, FedEx or UPS do a flat rate? You're like, like the post office, you can get a flat rate box? Not that I know of. So there's probably a reason why, because yeah. I know that I can't ship this motherfucker to 10 miles away or Juneau, Alaska for the same fucking price. Yeah. So. Yeah. Didn't FedEx get started on a guy, wasn't that his college thesis? Shipping checks. Yeah. Shipping checks. And the guy told him it'd never work. And yep. yeah. Must have worked out fairly well. Yeah, I think it did. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, Jesus Christ, we've went way off the rails on this. Yeah, we have. We, we have come... This was the straightforward this is not, conspiracy podcast. This, this is not even a full circle. This is a spiral yeah. of nothing. Thanks for listening. Yeah. No shit. We really took it around the horn there. I, yeah. It wasn't straightforward farming, but it was straightforward whatever. Yeah. So, it was straight something. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. We're trying to get back on track. Bear yeah. with us. Yeah. You got to bear with us. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep pushing through. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next time.